for you guys. Going to go over what's on the test. So here are all the concepts that we will be studying and you will be tested on tomorrow. If you need, pause this here, take a screenshot, do whatever you need. But these are the topics that are going to be covered on the test. And what I've done is create some problems for these. At any point, pause it, try the problem yourself, and then try to work it out with me, see if we get the same things. Um, so I've created a few problems for you guys. First of all, the LCD. Here, if you look, we have D over D plus 2 plus 2 over D minus 2, D plus 6 over D plus 2, D minus 2. Our least common denominator is going to be a product of all of the denominators here. So if you got this, D plus 2, D minus 2, you are indeed correct. What we then do is we then multiply it times each of these individually and cancel out. So if we multiply this times D plus 2, D minus 2, the D plus 2's cancel out. And what we get is D times D minus 2. Same thing for the next one, plus 2. Here the D minus 2's are going to cancel out. So we get D plus 2 equals just D plus 6. So now we're going to distribute combine like terms. So D times D is D squared. So right here we're going to put in a squared. All right, or not. So let's just call that D squared minus 2D. Over here we have plus 2D plus 4 equals d plus 6. So again, all we did there was just distribute this right here. I apologize, having a little bit of troubles. But that looks better. Now we combine like terms. Let's move everything over here. Name 2d plus 2d is going to be 0d. We subtract d over. And what we get is we have d squared. And then minus d, because we move the d to this side, and we have 4, we're going to subtract 2, that's going to be minus 2, equals 0. So as we said in class today, what we do from this point is we're going to factor. We're going to say what multiplies to 2 subtracts to 2, so we're going to say d plus 1, d minus 2, equals 0. And then of course our solutions are d equals negative 1, d equals positive 2. Last thing we have to do is check and if we check, when we put these in, if we put 2 in right here, we get 2 minus 2, that's 0. Thus, because we get a fraction with a denominator of 0, 2 is not a solution. And the only solution we have is d equals negative 1. So I'm just going to erase this. Okay, if you need help with that one, pause, go backwards, try it again. Next up, end behavior and graphing. So if we look here, our x-intercepts, our zeros, are going to be when we set each of these brackets equal to zero. So here we're going to get three. Here we're going to get negative two. And here finally, negative four. Those are our three x-intercepts. Our y-intercept, we put zero in for x. So zero minus three is minus three. Here we have two. And negative four, or excuse me, positive four. We multiply those all out, negative 3 times 2, negative 6, negative 6 times 4, negative 24. And we get our y-intercept of negative 24. None of these are doubles. It would only be a double zero if we had a squared, or a triple if we had a cubed. So we can graph 3, negative 2, negative 4. It's going to cross all of them. And because the leading coefficient is positive here, degree is 3, it's going to start out going down and end up going up. Cool, so if you'd like to sketch that one out, you can ask me before the test tomorrow if there are any questions. Solving going forward. What we have is take the GCF factor or do the quadratic formula. Here, we cannot factor or do the quadratic formula for something with a degree of 3. So we are going to take out our GCF. P brackets P squared minus 3P minus 4. Our GCF is P because that's the only thing we can take out. Now, we are going to factor once again. What multiplies to negative 4 combines to negative 3. Well, that is, of course, minus 4 plus 1, excuse me. So then our x-intercepts are as follows. 0, 4, 
negative 1, we could graph that. It has a degree of 3. It has a positive leading coefficient. We could find the y-intercept, which we already know is 0, because the x-intercept is 0. Um, and we could solve the cubic function that way. Moving on, I know this is fast. Please feel free. Go back, try any of these problems again. Ask me about them before our test tomorrow. With this circle, we want to find the center and the radius. Remember, the center is the opposite of what's with the x, in this case, positive 4, negative 1. So we get 4, negative 1. And the radius is going to be the square root of whatever is over here. This one is nice because it gives us a square root of 5 when we take the square root of 25. Then if we were graphing this, we could move on the x-axis over 4, the y-axis down 1. And we know at a radius of 5 in all directions, we could draw our circle and graph on an x-y-axis. This is, of course, not a three-dimensional. Um, so hopefully that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, moving ahead here. One of the questions we did recently, a lot of questions on. So slope and y-intercept. What we're going to say is the slope is y2 minus y1. So we'll take, we'll start here. We have negative 2 minus a negative 1. That's going to equal negative 2 plus 1, which gives us a negative 1. And then on the denominator, we're going to do the same thing. 6 minus 4, x2 minus x1. And what we get is 2. So our slope is negative 1 half. Okay, we can use that to solve for the y-intercept. So what we are going to do is we're going to take our equation, y equals mx plus b, and we're going to put in one of these points. I usually say let's take the smaller one, the easiest numbers. So negative 1 equals m, which we just said was negative 1 half, times x, which is 4, plus b. From there, we can solve for b. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. So we get negative 1 equals negative 2 plus b. Add the 2 over, we get b equals, of course, that's going to be 1. And our equation would then be y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. Okay, and you could graph that very easily by finding our y-intercept. So negative 1 half x plus 1. Our y-intercept would be 1 on the y-axis. We could go down 1 and over 2, connect those lines. If it's an inequality, of course, we shade up or down, depending on um, if it's less than or greater than. But here we found our equation for the line. So guys, hope that was a little bit helpful. I know it was fast. I know it was a lot. Um, but good luck studying for the test tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow if there are more questions. Peace out. Good night.